This is a really cool chapter. There's, I, there's a couple little things in here I want to talk about. And there's also a lot of possibilities. Yes, especially with the tame stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's the whole. It's a tame chapter. I should try and stick with Taim. I think Taim. Taim. Yeah, now I that think he's introduced, that's. We should really pick one. Yeah, I think that's. Let, let's go with Taim. Taim. Because I think that's the canon. Taim. Because Taim very easily becomes Tam, and so by adding a second syllable in there, and Taim isn't tame. Yeah. <laughs> right. No, he's the opposite of Taim. He's Taim, Mazrim Taim. Yeah, there's there's going to be some interesting stuff, but I'll I'll wait until we get there because we're probably talking about the same things anyway. <laughs> this is the Wheel of Time Spoilers podcast. Your hosts are Seth Jacobson and Patrick Heiner. Hi, I'm Seth. And I'm Patrick. <laughs> and this is Chapter 2 of Lord of Chaos, A New Arrival. And our symbol is the Aes Sedai symbol, the joined Aes Sedai symbol. Or the symbol of ancient Aes Sedai is probably the best way to say that. A new arrival. I guess, yeah, it's just Taim showing up. And if you folks remember, uh, Mazram Taim just showed up uh, at the palace gates as uh, Rand is here talking with Bashir. Mazarim Taim. Before Rand, other men through the centuries had claimed to be the Dragon Reborn. The last few years before Rand had seen a plague of false dragons, some of whom could actually channel. Mazarim Taim was one of those, raising an army and ravaging Saldea before he was taken. Bashir's face did not change, but he gripped his sword hilt white knuckle hard, and Tamad was looking at him for orders. Taim's escape, on the way to Tarvalin to be gentled, was the reason Bashir had come to Andor in the first place. That was how much Saldea feared and hated Mazram Taim. Queen Tenobia had sent Bashir, with an army, to pursue the man, wherever he went, however long it took, to make sure Taim never troubled Saldea again. The maidens merely stood calmly, but that name burst among the Andorans like a torch tossed in dry gla- grass. Amarilla was just being helped to her feet, yet her eyes rolled up in her head again. She would have gone down in a heap once more if Corinne had not eased her to the paving stones. Eligar staggered back among the columns and bent over, retching loudly. The rest were all gasps and panic. Pressing handkerchiefs to mouths and clutching at sword hilts, even stolid Corinne licked her lips nervously. Rand took his hand away from his coat pocket. The amnesty, he said and both Saldeans gave him a long, flat look. "'What if he has not come here for your amnesty?' Bashir said after a moment. "'What if he still claims to be the ja- dragon reborn?' Feet shuffled among the Andorans. No one wanted to be within miles of where the one power might be used in a duel. "'If he thinks that,' Rand said firmly, "'I will disabuse him.' He had the rarest sort of angry owl in his pocket, one made for men, a carving of a fat little man with a sword— However strong Taim might be, he could not stand up to that. But if he has come for the amnesty, it is his, the same as any other. Whatever Taim had done in Saldea, he could not afford to turn away a man who could channel, a man who would not have to be taught from the first steps. He needed such a man. He would turn away no one except one of the forsaken, not unless he was forced to. Demondred and Samael, Semerhag and Masana, Asmodian and ran forced loose there and down. He could not afford distractions now. Again, Bashir paused before speaking, but finally he nodded and let go of his sword. Your amnesty holds, of course, but mark me, Althor. If Taim ever sets foot in Saldea again, he will not live to leave. There are too many memories. No command I give, nor Tenobia herself will stop it. I will keep him out of Sildea. Either Taim had not come here to submit to him, or else it was going to be necessary to kill him. Unconsciously, Rand touched his pocket, pressing the fat little man through the wool. Let's have him in here, Tamad eyed Bashir, but Bashir's short nod came so quickly that it seemed Tamad bowed in response to the spoken command. Irritation flashed in Rand, but he said nothing, and Tamad hurried away in that slightly rolling walk. Bashir folded his arms across his chest and stood with one knee bent, 
a portrait of a man at his ease. Those dark tilted eyes, fixed on the way Tamad had gone, made it a portrait of a man wanting to kill something. The scuffling of feet started again among the Andorans. Hesitant half-steps -step away, then pulling back. Their breathing sounded as though they had run miles. You may leave, Rand told them. I, for one, will stand at your shoulder, Lear began, just as Nian simply or said sharply, I will not run before, Rand cut them both off. Go! They wanted to show him they were unafraid, even if they were ready to soil themselves. They wanted to run abandoning what dignity they had not already tossed at his feet. It was a simple choice. He was the dragon reborn, and currying favor meant obedience, and obedience, in this case, meant doing what they truly wanted. A flurry of extravagant bows and deep skirt-spreading curtsies, hurried murmurs of, By your leave, my lord dragon, and as you command, my lord dragon, and they were not exactly scurrying out, but walking as quickly as they could manage without appearing to scurry in the opposite direction from that in which Tamad had gone. No doubt, they did not want to risk a chance encounter with Mazram Taim on his way in. The waiting stretched out in the heat. It took time to bring a man through the sprawling corridors of the palace gates. But once the Andorans were gone, no one moved. Bashir kept his gaze steady on the place Taim would appear. The maidens watched everywhere, but they always did, as if they looked ready to veil themselves again in an instant. They always did that, too. Except for their eyes, they could have been statues. I guess we can start with, with Rand and his reaction. He's holding on to that fat little man like it's a gun. It is. <laughs> basically, like... Yeah. <laughs> every time he thinks of Taim, he, like, checks his pocket, you know? He's basically, like, the mobster who checks the uh, the gun holster. Yeah, he doesn't know what's going to happen. Taim might walk in and say, hello, Solo. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's important that he's got his hand on that gun. <laughs> totally. Because he's going he's gonna to try and reach out. And for all he knows, Mazram Tame is like, I'm going to try and kill you and declare myself the Dragon Reborn in your place. Because I still think I am. Right. I, and for all anyone in the room knows, he, he may very well do that. But Rand is sure that he can beat any, any single man in, in, in a duel. Any single man without a Terran Grail. Yes. Or without an Yes. <laughs> That's an important uh, thing to mention. Which he doesn't know that Mazram Taim doesn't have one, right? He doesn't know that over his 15-ish years of channeling that he hasn't found one. It's entirely possible that he has. True. Yeah. The only other things I think that I wanted to get at in the my read in there were two things. Um, I thought it was interesting and illustrative illustrative i think they're both correct yeah i i, I think you might be right uh, bashir says basically like listen rand i'm gonna do what you're telling me to do here but if this guy walks back into saldea i won't be able to stop the people like if me and the queen agreed to try to stop people from killing tame they wouldn't listen to us so he was like please please like okay like give this guy your amnesty but do not send him back to my country you know, and he's saying all this while his soldiers literally have, um, like, waiting for Bashir to, to sneeze neck. wrong. Yeah, yeah. They're... <laughs> <laughs> they're they're basically they're playing maiden's kiss without the kissing part. Yeah, and that's that's also kind of demonstrated at that point where uh, what is it? Er early on in the readout, where Rand's a little irritated that Tamad says something or other, and Rand's like, you know, go get go get him or whatever, like. Or whatever, and Tumad and Bashir nods to Tumad, and then Tumad leaves. I think there's a bit of that happening there. Sure. Well, I mean, they obey Bashir first. I mean, he yeah. is their general, and even though he's pledged to Rand, he's still loyal to the Queen of Tenobio, and so he Rand is more of a, an advisor, if that makes sense. Well, right, right. Rand's not so used to that. No, <laughs> he's used to the Aiel to do what they well. I was going to say, do whatever you say, but, the, you know, for the, <laughs> the maidens don't really do exactly what it says. But. Um, and the only other thing, and we'll have more opportunities to talk about this through this chapter, is that Rand realizes that he needs an experienced channeler, hopefully one much more experienced than himself, because he's he's building his tower already. I believe the next, the chapter after this is our intro to the Black Tower. I mean, it's... The farm. Yeah, it's not called that yet, 
but we hear Rand say that at the end, like, I'm going to take Taim to the farm. I had forgotten, actually. <laughs> it's been so long since I thought uh, about this part in the series that it's initially a field that they call the farm. There's a bunch of men just camping. Kind of an odd place to set up, too. Do we ever talk about, like, why they choose that location? Ooh, gosh. If you were to ask me now, I'm not sure I remember the reasons, to be honest. It's in between roughly Camelin and Tarvelin, from what I remember, right? We'll have to uh, take a look into the next chapter, because I think that's where they, when they visit the farm. Or it's technically in Andor somewhere, isn't it? Yes. Brain, Brainwood area? Is that correct? Right, because... Okay. Um, that's what I thought. I was going to say, Queen, Queen Elaine demands access to inspect it, and Tame is sort of mocks her. Is that whole confrontation between the two of them, when Taim and, and Elaine are like... Because she's like, you're on my territory, and he's like, yeah, so... What are you mm-hmm. going to do about it? <laughs> you going to attack my 200 channelers? That is a good point that at this point, Rand has made his headquarters in Camelin, So it makes sense that he just set up nearby in a farm. But he can, he can channel. Why would he set up? You know, uh, I don't know. I guess Tyr is not exactly a good place for it. Kyrian is kind of chaotic. So I guess if you're looking for something that's stable, that is owned by Rand, Andor is really the only choice. Um, and then there's one last point, and this is something we'll bring up, I, I think I'll talk about a couple of times, but this fits in the category of things that make us think that Taim is forsaken or evil or something like that. The heat hardly seemed to touch him. So that means he's had training from somebody. Either from the only people we know who are male who can teach him that trick are forsaken. I. This is why I was suspicious of tame from the very beginning um because he he's been channeling for 15 years and he hasn't gone mad that's a big part of it yeah it's just not explainable like i I mean i guess you could say like well it's different for everyone and some you know there's got to be outliers and that's surely true but 15 years it does make me think (laughs) <laughs> that Taim has been a dark friend for a long time, or that perhaps he had some com- contact with Ishamael before, like in the dream shard when Ishamael was trying to get out, or something. Maybe, yeah. I, I And I want to talk about Tamandred, taim Demandred combo. People are saying that when he wrote this, Taim was supposed, taim was supposed to be Demandred, DT specifically. And I actually, you know, I'd like to do some research as to exactly when that was converted over. Because we know in the initial notes that was the plan, right? At some point in the notes, Jordan thought that Taim would be... But he clearly changed that. And I think he made that change long before he wrote this scene. But other people seem to think that it was only later he changed his mind. And I'd like to see some evidence one way or the other, because I don't have any offhand. Yes, I I, I, want to just totally... Totally agree with that. That I would really like to see some evidence one way or another because um, – or exactly when that happened because, you know, the way I read this scene, it could you could really interpret this either way. He could be an outlier. Maybe he doesn't become a dark friend until right before this. I, I feel like that's really the only option. He pretty much has to be a dark friend by now. Would you agree with that? Sure. Yeah. Well, and, and my, my theory is that he was rescued from the Aes Sedai – by one of the Forsaken, Demondred or Shamael, and then was trained by them for a while. Yeah. And so he's been trained up, and like even though he has been around for a while and may have learned other things, the idea is that some of these skills he learned from Forsaken. Certainly, he knows how to travel. When Rand, I think when Rand shows him the weave, he's surprised, but I think he already knows it. He learns it very quickly. He does learn it suspiciously quickly. Also, in a bit here, I believe this is when he and Rand are are talking to each other, but Rand says something like, can you sense when a man can channel and can you train or can you train them? He asks them them something like that because I need a man that can do I need men that can do these things. And Taim says both. And, you know, considering other than the Forsaken and Rand, there's just no one he could have learned how to do that from. And I mean... Yeah, I'm probably just going to end up rehashing this over and over, but it's it's all very suspicious. (laughs) That's all I can say. It just doesn't seem to add up. He's being protected from the taint. Agreed. Agreed. But I also want to, like, I want to acknowledge the people out there who are convinced that, like, up 
up through this point, you know, Jordan only changed his mind much later after he'd written a lot of these scenes. So, you know, w- one thing to take into account and one thing to think about is if this was actually Demondred, would he act this way? And for the most part, we seem pretty consistent, right? Like, yeah, Taim's actions seem very consistent with him being a Forsaken in disguise. But, but that's not canon. And I want to, like, make sure that people are like, that is not what actually is happening here. What's happening here is he is a dark friend, most likely converted by Demandred when he was rescued from the Aes Sedai. That's, that's what I, that, yeah, that's what I think happened. Or that's when I think it happens, I should say. Um, yeah, and you already brought this up, but the Heath thing, I mean, I don't know that we see almost any other men doing that, other than, again, the Forsaken, Forsaken people trained by the Forsaken, by or women. Female channelers, I should say. Also the ability to detect the spark in somebody else. Mm-hmm. It's something you seem to be have to be taught in, with a man. Um, I did note, as I was kind of thinking along those lines, uh, and this uh, moving on to the next scene here from the readout, that, okay, Mazram Taim shows up, Tumad uh, uh, walks him in, and he's surrounded by guards. Everybody's, you know, holding a sword point at him. And he's standing there, and of course we see the description of Taim, um, we see that he's not sweating, but on the on the note of could this possibly be Mondred, I just wanted to note that Taim's clothes really look like he hasn't washed them or worn anything other than that in like a month. <laughs> this is what your clothes look like yeah, when they were yeah. once really nice and then you lived in a prison cell for a month or walked for a month or something like that, you know. I just wanted to note that. It does seem to be he actually walked for a month, yeah. And and it doesn't seem like Demondred would gateway in. Like he, I think Jordan would, because he loves to give us leave us little clues in the clothes. And if a Forsaken came in, they would be not covered in road dust. No, he would say something like, "Despite the travels, his boots were clean." Demondred's not the deceptive type. Like I could see someone like Mugedian maybe doing something like that, but she's a hider. Demondred is not a you know. Yeah, he's a liar, but he's not a, a hider. Right. <laughs> And again, the, the heat hardly touches him, and I don't think I'm, we, either of us mentioned this yet, but throughout the dialogue between Taim, Bashir, and Rand, they're, like, giving all kinds of threats to Taim. You know, like, he's clearly it, well, just walked into the lion's den, and he's, like, being a little smirky and looking everyone right in the eye, and he just isn't afraid. Right, which is a very forsaken trait. I took that as either evidence that he is a forsaken or that he does not believe that he can die. Because <laughs> he should. He should be afraid of his own death in this scene, you know? Here's another theory. He did go insane. His insanity is his belief in his own immortality. I had th- thoughts along those lines, but I just couldn't... I couldn't... I didn't feel like I could build that any better than, you know, he should be really scared right now. Why isn't he scared? Not even a little? Come on. Uh, and speaking of red herrings, you notice that Bashir almost doesn't recognize him. So there is that, like, what if, for example, Demondred killed Mazram Tame and took over his, and is just showing up and being like, yo, I'm Tame, what's up? And Demondred's <laughs> like, well, you kind of look like him without the beard. And he's like, no, I shaved. I look different. Oh my gosh. And Fire Phoenix posted this a, uh, a second ago on a Discord while during the live recording, but I'll just read it really quickly. Um, this is in a question and answer session with Robert Jordan. And RJ says, yes, Demondred has never posed as Mazram Tain. All right, those of you who fell over from shock of a simple, straightforward answer can get up off the floor now. Sometimes, simple and straightforward can be the most devious of all, as any student of I said I will tell you. Right. Which tells me that RJ said nothing there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think. Because <laughs> all he's saying is canon- canonically... Demondred never posed as Taim. Yeah. Did I maybe write the scene with that in mind? Eh. That's for you to know. <laughs> That's for me to know. Right. He's basically saying nothing, which is genius <laughs> in its own way. He would, if they are the same person, he wouldn't be. He wouldn't be posing as that person. He would be that person. But if they're, yeah, yeah, it's. Yeah, I don't think he's trying to be that deceptive. I think he's just saying like. In canon, no, Maz, you know, Demandra never pretended to be Mazram Taim. I'm nodding. But I do think that Jordan was putting in a lot of red hair. 
put in a lot of red herrings into this chapter to make you think he could be Demondred. And I think that's where he's saying straightforward is the most deceptive. Taim is actually who he says he is. Yeah. Besides being a dark friend. That's kind of the other side of it is if you were lucky enough to not go insane and you had 15 years to, without any help at all, but figure it out, you have 15 years. That's a long time to master something. Mm -hmm. I don't see, in theory, I mean, if he had that much time, I don't see why it couldn't be done. And and presumably he found a few other people who could channel. One of them went insane. You know, he, he may have figured out. He mentions at some point. Yeah. He learned how to test people like all those things are entirely possible um, over 15 years and 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 you know that he would look for others not even necessarily because he's a bad guy doing recruiting but because i mean you're alone out there that seems like a very human thing to do you know look for others like you <laughs> oh no someone just uh phoenix just posted a, a dragon mount theory article could moradin be tame's father yeah, the timelines don't match up. Moradin hasn't been out, or uh, Ishamael hasn't been out. Oh, do you mean like the body of Moradin? Could be time. That doesn't make any sense. Oh, why, why would he do that? <laughs> That's just... I like the wacky theories sometimes. It's it's fun to watch people try to justify. <laughs> In any case, Moradin. No, I can't even. I could do something with like time change, like make have him have a kid and then put him in a vacuole where time goes differently and have him like grow up there and age so he was an adult at the same time it's just incredibly crazy it's out of the world out of this world now <laughs> for no reason no reason whatsoever it's, even i think there's a limit to crazy theories and i love my crazy theories can i can i just point something out a little bit absolutely he's talking to bashir he's talking about after he talks about shaving I hear you hid what happened to Musar and Hashari and their wives. Mm -hmm. And I was looking like, what happened? All we really wanted to do now is serve and obey. Oh, yeah. He well, hit them with compulsion. Yeah. Taim knows compulsion, and he knew compulsion before he was taken prisoner. Yes. Although this is, is an interesting thing, basically, and this will be in my read, but this is, we should talk about it. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, so Bashir basically may, asks Taim to prove that it, he's really Taim. Uh, Taim says first, he's like, I shaved Bashir. It's hot here because, um, you know, they're from far away. Uh, and then Bashir says, OK, then tell me something that only you and I would know. And it seems like from the dialogue here, and again, I'll read it in a second. But basically Taim's saying that under a, par a flag of parlay, four of Bashir's people met with Taim to, you know, to make peace during a battle or something. And they, the four of them ganged up on him and tried to kill, to stab him to death uh, during a parlay, an official parlay. And Taim turned and broke their minds and that of their wives, apparently, as well. Oh, because they would have been there. They're Saldanes. Yes. Those were the four was two men and two women. Oh, two I see. their I wives. See. Yeah. Um, he broke their minds and made them uh, so that they would never want to do anything but what they were told to do ever again. And that's when Bashir almost flips out and loses it. Like, how are they doing? <laughs> but, you know, basically that they're they're drooling somewhere in a cell or something. Right. Yeah, they're mind fucked. But also, I guess, sorry, I'm walking, chasing my tail in circles here. But, uh, the reason I brought that up is because who was wrong in that situation? Everyone. Everyone was wrong in that situation. And so that it may initially make you think, whoa, Tame's a bad dude. But like Bashir's people tried to assassinate him under an official parlay flag. I mean, that's worse. I think that's worse, to be honest. I would agree. Yeah. No, my shock is just that he knows compulsion. Yeah, I, I forgot to even bring that up. But that is another con uh, possible strike against Taim as far as like, has he been a dark friend for a long time? If he's attacked and someone tries to knife him and the first tool he turns to is compulsion, dude, not like... Right, like a b air bubble, you know? Yeah, or like a, just tie him up with weaves of air. Like, we see people do that all the time. It's got to be easier to do four weaves of air than four heavily complex weaves of compulsion. Right, or of fire. Turn turn their knives into molten steel. Like <laughs> Right, yeah. You don't, you don't have to do anything that complicated. Anyway, I'll start this read because it's fairly long. But this is um, some of the stuff in here is some one 
it's a it's a very interesting conversation between the three of these men. I'll just leave that there. Bashir took advantage of the silence. You say you're Mazram Tayyim? He sounded doubtful, and Ran looked at him in confusion. Was this Tayyim or not? Only a madman would claim that name if it was not his. The prisoner's mouth quirked in what might have been the beginning of a smile, and he rubbed his chin. I shaved, Bashir. His voice held more than a hint of mockery. Mockery. It is hot, Miss Far South, or had you not noticed? Hotter than it should be, even here. Do you want proof of me? Shall I channel for you? His dark eyes flickered to Rand, then back to Bashir, whose face was growing darker by the minute. Perhaps not that. Not now. I remember you. I had you beat at Irinjavar until those visions appeared into the sky. But everyone knows that. What does everyone not know that you and Mazram Taim will? Focused on Bashir, he seemed unaware of his guards or their swords still hovering near his ribs. I hear you hid what happened to Massar and Hakari and their wives. The mockery was gone. He was just relating what had happened now. They shouldn't have tried to kill me under a parlay flag. I trust you found them good places as servants? All they really want to do now is serve and obey. They won't be happy otherwise. I could have killed them. They all four drew daggers. Taim, Bashir growled, hand darting for his hilt. You! Rand stepped in front of him, seizing his wrist with the blade half drawn. The guard's blades, Tamad's as well, were touching Taim now, very likely touching flesh the way they were shoved against his coat, but he did not flinch. Did you come to see me, Rand demanded, or to taunt Lord Bashir? If you do it again, I'll let him kill you. My amnesty pardons what you've done, but it doesn't let you flaunt your crimes. Taim studied Rand a moment before speaking. Despite the heat, the fellow barely sweated. To see you. You were the one in the vision in the sky. They say it was the Dark One himself you fought. Not the Dark One, Rand said. Bashir was not fighting him exactly, but he could feel the tension in the man's arm. If he let go, that blade would be out and through Taim in a heartbeat, unless he used the power, or Taim did. That had to be avoided, if it could be. He kept his grip on Bashir's wrist. He called himself Baal Zaman, but I think he was Ishmael. I killed him later, in the Stone of Tyr. I hear you've killed a number of the Forsaken. Should I call you my Lord Dragon? I have heard this lot use the title. Do you mean to kill all the Forsaken? Do you know any other way to deal with them? Rand asked. They die, or the world does, unless you think they can be talked into abandoning, abandoning the shadow, the way they abandon the light. This was becoming ridiculous. Here he was carrying on a conversation with a man who certainly had five sword points drawing blood beneath his coat, while he himself held on to another man, who wanted to add a sixth to draw more than a trickle. At least Bashir's men were too disciplined to do more without their general's word. At least Bashir was keeping his mouth shut, admiring Taim's coolness. Ran went on as quickly as he could without seeming to be hurried. Whatever your crimes are, Taim, they pale beside the Forsakens. Have you ever tortured an entire city? made thousands of people assist in breaking each other slowly and breaking their own loved ones? Semerhog did that, for no reason than that she could, to prove she could, for the pleasure of it. Have you murdered children? Graindall did. She called it kindness, so they would not suffer after she enslaved their parents and carried them away. He just hoped the other Saldans were listening half as closely as Taim. The man had actually leaned forward slightly in interest. He hoped they did not ask too many questions about where all this came from. Have you given people to Trollocs to eat? All the Forsaken did. Prisoners who would not turn always went to the Trollocs, if they weren't murdered out of hand. But Demondred captured two cities, just because he thought the people there had slighted him before he went over to the Shadow, and every man, woman, and child went to a, into Trolloc bellies. Mesa Anna set up schools in the territory she controlled, Schools where children and young people were taught the glories of the Dark One, taught to kill their friends who didn't learn well enough or fast enough. I could go on. I could start from the beginning of the list and go through all thirteen names, adding a hundred crimes as bad to every name. Whatever you've done, it does, does not rank with that. And now you've come to accept my pardon, to walk in the light and submit to me, to battle the Dark One as hard as you ever battled anyone. The Forsaken are reeling, I mean to hunt them all down, eradicate them, and you will help me. For that, you've earned your pardon. 
I tell you true. You'll probably earn it a hundred times over again, before the last battle is done. At last he felt Bashir's arm relax, felt the man's sword sliding back into its scabbard. Ran barely stops himself from exhaling in relief. I don't see any reason to guard him so closely now. Put up your swords. Slowly, Tamad and the others began sheathing their blades. Slowly, but they were doing it. Then Taim spoke. Submit? I had thought more of a compact between us. The other Saldeans tensed. Bashir was still behind Rand, but Rand could feel him stiffening. The maidens did not move a muscle, except that Jelani's hand twitched toward her veil. Taim tilted his head, unaware. I would be the lesser partner, of course, yet I have had years more than you to study the power. There is much I could teach you. Rage rose up and ran till his vision filmed red. He had spoken of things he should have no knowledge of, had probably birthed a dozen rumors about himself and the Forsaken, all to make this fellow's deeds seem less dark, and the man had the audacity to speak of compacts? Loose Theron raved in his head, Kill him! Kill him now! Kill him! For once, Rand did not bother to quell the voice. No compact, he growled. No partners. I am the dragon reborn, Taim. Me. If you have knowledge I can make use of, I will. But you will go where I say, do as I say, when I say. Without pause, Taim slipped to one knee. I submit to the dragon reborn. I will serve and obey. The corners of his mouth quivered again in that almost smile as he rose. Tumat gaped at him. That fast? Rand said softly. What I wanted to bring up, uh, specifically when he says, I would be the lesser partner. I've had years more than you to study the power. Um, and something we brought up early on in this chapter is when Rand looks at Taim and says, oh, he must be, he looks about 35. He's had 15 years to fight against the taint. But we never get confirmation of that from Taim. And based on this quote that I found from Jordan, Jordan says Taim has slowed and he is in his late 20s. So apparently part of the reason he looks so old is that he had a really hard journey, lost a bunch of weight, and just looks like crap. He's actually only about 27, so Rand's assumption about 15 years of channeling is way off. So he's more like 10 years older than Rand? A little less? Nine? Eight? He's, yeah, not even that. Less than that. Yeah. Because he's 27, Rand's 21 uh, at this point, because if we're talking uh, 99. So yeah, it's... Uh, so effectively, Taim would only have their age difference in the amount of time that he's been able to train that Rand hasn't. Six exactly. Years. And it's entirely possible that he maybe uh, didn't start channeling as early as Rand. So it's entirely, you know, it, it makes it a lot more realistic to be like, oh, he's had five years of channeling where he hasn't gone insane, not 15 years of channeling where he hasn't gone insane. And so that, that actually uh, sort of puts all the rest of the theories sort of in a different light where we're like, man, something weird has to be going on here because how could he survive for that long without going insane? Well, the answer is, again, unreliable narrator. Rand was wrong. Yeah. And we've been taking that as canon for his age, but, but Taim is actually quite a bit younger than Rand thinks he is. Uh, I guess the only other thing I wanted to say is that, uh, you know, all that stuff about that he knows about the past, about the Forsaken, I'm sure Taim reported that right back to the Forsaken. <laughs> Probably. Right? Yeah. They don't spend much time together after this. No, but I guarantee he must be spying, right? For Demondred. I'm guaranteeing. Uh, part of the reason I think he wants to stay close to Rand, one of his. And, like, he's kind of upset that he just gets delegated to go, like, deal with the tower as he was hoping to be close to Rand and a spy. I believe Taim's contact is supposed to be Demondred. Demondred broken free. That's one of the tools that Demondred talks about crafting. That's interesting. Yeah, I always wish. I always wish we had more from Demondred. I don't feel very much like the Demondred that Sanderson wrote in the last battle is the same Demondred that we get in these chapters. I know that's the, you know like the same way that like we get a slightly different Matt. Like it's just a slightly different character. It doesn't feel the same to me. Sure, of course not. That fast, Rand said softly. The rage was not gone. It was white hot. If he gave way, he was not sure what he would do. Luce Theron still babbled in the shadows of his head. Kill him. Must kill him! Rand pushed loose Theron away, to, to a barely audible murmur. Perhaps he should not be surprised at this. Strange things happened around Tavarin, especially one as strong as himself. That a man might change his mind in a moment, even if his course had been carved in stone, should be no great surprise. But the anger had him, and a strong streak of suspicion. 
you named yourself the Dragon Reborn, fought battles all over Saldea, were only captured because you were knocked unconscious, and you gave up this quickly. Why? Taim shrugged. What are my choices? To wander the world alone, friendless, hunted, while you rise to glory? That's supposing Bashir doesn't manage to kill me before I can leave the city. Or your Aiel women don't. Even if they don't, the Aes that I will corner me sooner or later. I doubt the tower means to forget Mazram Taim. Or I can follow you, and part of that glory will be mine. For the first time he looked around, at his guards, at the maidens, and shook his head as if he could not believe it. I might have been the one. How could I be sure otherwise? I can channel. I'm strong. What said I was not the dragon reborn? All I had to do was fulfill just one of the prophecies. Like managing to be born on the slopes of Dragon Mount? Rand said coldly. That was the first prophecy to be met. Taim's mouth quirked again. It was really not a smile. It never touched his eyes. Victors write history. Had I taken the Stone of Tear, history would have shown I was born on Dragon Mount, of a woman never touched by a man, and the heavens opened up in radiance to herald my coming, the sort of thing they say about you now. But you took the stone with your Aiel, and the world hails you as the Dragon Reborn. I know better than to stand against that. You are the one. Well, since the whole loaf won't be mine, I'll settle for whatever slices fall my way. Taim does a pretty good job at uh, showing why he would change his mind. His arguments, I mean, sound. Were I in his position, I'd say something similar. And again, the best lies are mixed with truth. All of that's true. He's just also hedging his bets by being on the side of the Forsaken as well. He's, he's like, well, what are my options? I could either be second to the Dragon Reborn, or I could go to the dark side and use that power. Use one power to bootstrap my dark side power. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't mention that option, does he? <laughs> he does have that option. Or I could turn to the dark side, give my immortal soul to the dark one, become a modern day dreadlord, or forsaken. That always confuses me what the difference is, but... I think to be a forsaken, you have to be one of the originals. You have to be one of the ageless. But they make Taim one. Yeah. He's... The only one I can think of that is doesn't come from the original breaking. That's a good way to say it, Leia. Forsaken are dreadlords, but all dreadlords are not forsaken. The Venn diagram of dreadlords and forsaken. Scotch is whiskey, but whiskey is not scotch. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I'm as sane as he does. I was gonna, and he's yeah. like, <laughs> I was going to say as sane as you, but then he pauses... <laughs> like, uh, as Lord Bashir? Because <laughs> I don't know if you're sane or not yet. Yeah, Rand asks him about, you know, finding new channelers and training them. Taim says he can do all of that. We covered all that before. And then he hands over the seal. Yeah, and Taim says, uh, you know, I brought you this gift for when I was presenting myself, and it's a seal of the Dark One's prison. And Rand talks a lot about the seven seals. He knows three are broken three in his possession, and one he doesn't know about, but that's the one that was just recently broken on the trip to Saldea. To to Saldea? Yeah. Nynaeve had it. They wrapped it up in the silk gown and boxed it away, and when they pulled it out, it was broken. Oh, to Saladar. Oh, what did I say? Saldea. Saldea, I'm sorry, Saladar, yes. Yeah, that's relevant in this chapter. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, these are all Saldeans. I'm looking at the word Saldea, which is why I said it. Um, yes, no, so on the trip to Saladar, uh, that... that one was broken. So that's the one he gotcha. is, doesn't know about. So the Supergirls just had the one. They just had the one, yeah. Um, and I wasn't sure where to take this. I didn't uh, highlight anything here, but when Rand touches the seal loose there and starts yelling in his head. And this is really like the scene, I think, to me, where if you were around Rand and you saw this, you are no longer wondering if he's insane. You're he wondering. Is insane. He is <laughs> yeah. insane. Like, if someone says, has voices in their head and uncontrollable actions and nearly does something that destroys the world, yeah. Yeah, he's insane. <laughs> like, he has it under some measure of control, but I think, like Bashir says, I don't mind following an insane person as long as he wins. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I was kind of hooked by something you, I think you almost said before when you're saying, uh, if you're looking at Rand right now and he's like, in this scene, basically, uh, Taim hands the seal, which is wrapped in like a, a cloth, to to Rand. Rand accepts it, 
touches it, realizes what it is, and, you know, loose there and starts saying, break it, break them, they all must break, break them all, like whispering in his head. And then Rand kind of blinks and suddenly realizes he's holding the seal up above his head and he's whispering that to himself. That So it may not have been a voice in his head. He's saying it out loud. And, um, and the whole, you know, Bashir and Taim and the, all the guards are standing there staring at him. Any idea why the seal triggers that sort of reaction in him? No. It is an interesting question, though. Because, you know, until, uh, all the way until the end, Rand insists that Luz Theron was the one who knew to break the seals, not him. My thought, and I no real evidence to back this up, is we know that the Dark One has broken four of the seals, and not many of them are left. Mm-hmm. And we know that Mazram Tame is giving this to him, I'm guessing for a reason. So my question is, you know, it, it, here's the other thing I want to uh, presuppose. We've also seen the Supergirls feel the Dark One's touch through the seal before it was broken. So is the fact that when Taim hands on the seal is somehow having the seal in his pos- possession, somehow letting the Dark One touch Rand and cause the taint to sort of surge forward and make Rand a little more insane. And was that deliberate by Taim? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with it. I'm going with it. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I don't think necessarily it was deliberate, right? I'm going to, I'm going to pull back on that one. I think that, that he, but it would make sense as his evil No, for boy. sure. Yeah. It, it yeah. makes all, so much sense. It's, uh, it's hard to, to deny. I hadn't even thought of that, but I like your explanation because there is no reason, you know, like I was saying in our last conversation a couple of days ago in, uh, in chapter one, one of the things that I'm going to be looking out for in the series from this point on is when Luz Theron tells Rand to do something, explains how to do something or something like that, I really want to be taking a look at, is it possible that this isn't coming from another brain, another source, is it that it's either... Rand discovering something, which is not unprecedented in, in any degree. Like Avienda, Nynaeve, Elaine, Egwene, they're all doing this all the time, discovering, rediscovering things. Or, like in this case, is the Dark One whispering in his mind directly? Because that actually, mechanically, I don't see why that wouldn't work. Because I always kind of saw it as the more tainted Rand becomes, the deeper his connection with the Dark One and why the Dark One can manipulate speak to him they're connected almost like you would be if you were a dreadlord or one of the forsaken almost not it's not as powerful but like that the taint is the dark one totally you're just like you're just like a heavy petting like you know you're not like making out yet or anything but (laughs) there's contact there's definite contact now okay that that's my wacky theory realistically what i think taim is actually doing and and this sort of occurred to me just now, is he gives the seal to Rand, puts a tracker on it, and then when he wants to steal the rest, he assumes they're all together, and he knows he can just steal them all back, steal that one back, and get the rest with it. And that's how he's able to steal them at the last battle. I was wondering something along those lines, too, when you, you first said that. Because, uh, well, the question that popped into my head was, the seal is Quendiar. Can you put a tracking device in air quotes, a tracking weave on a piece of on a piece of quendiar with the same ease you would on a you know a nickel seems like it does yeah and if he, if he can invert it which again if he's had a fors- forsaken or not even him doing it like demand or it could clearly do it in the past it seems like the 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 density of the material that you're putting the the tracker on helps it stick for longer sure which is why Moraine gives the, the boys a silver penny. That's a piece of metal that'll last a long time. I think there's another uh, example of a belt buckle somewhere, but things like that. We, I have to assume that like an inverted tracking weave on this would last long enough for Taim to go get it before the last battle. And that's, that's a good reason enough to give it to Rand, is basically say, here, go put this with the rest of your precious shit. <laughs> you know, and now I know where it is. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and I, I do really like, I had never thought of this until you just said that, but I do really like the idea that Demondred gives Luz Theron, or sorry, I'm I'm looking at the text too and making mistakes. Demondred gives Taim the seal 
and says, give this to Rand when you go present yourself because you're going to work for him, air quotes again, knowing that the uh, Dark One will, will be closer to Rand, a little bit closer to him, whisper weird stuff into his mind, make him... Uh... Also, you can track down the rest. Also, uh, it gets you into his trust. You know, this, there seems to be... There could be multiple reasons, right? Yeah, a lot of different reasons. Particularly particularly the giving someone a gift so that you can track that gift to where they keep all their expensive things. Like, you know, all the other seals or Terangriel or you know, anything. Uh, and Leia brings up that the belt buckle was uh, the put on a thief that was going to track Melar. Um, hey, thank you. By Elaine. I knew I remember that from somewhere. So that, that gets used a couple of times. Then I was like, oh no, there's a lot of stuff happening with... With belt buckles and Mistborn, I'm not crossing series, am I? <laughs> I thought you were for a second, but I was like, no, me no, too. that's definitely a thing later. It's like, oh, I'm just going to push ahead if no one calls me down. <laughs> is is somebody storing weight in their belt buckle? Is that is a metal mine? Is that what we're talking about here? You know, I think the only other thing I wanted to say was the story. I wanted to bring up the story Taim tells about where the seal came from and how much it sounds like Fane, Fane's... Oh, that's Sarah. a good point. Yeah, story? it's almost exactly it's like the, the same, same story. It's well, weird. except except <laughs> Fane is the farmer. Yes, in, in the story. story, Fane is the farmer. In in Taim's story, he meets the old farmer. Rand says, "Where did he find it?" And Taim says, "Verbatim, uh, after a little dissembling, a decaying little farm in Saldea. I stopped for water, and the farmer gave it to me. He was old, with no children or grandchildren to pass it on to, and he thought I was the dragon reborn. He claimed his family had guarded it for more than 2,000 years, claimed they were kings and queens during the Trolloc Wars, and nobles under Arthur Hawkwing. I think in Fane's story, Arthur Hawkwing gave his family the seal and said, hide this and never tell anyone. But it's like, it's a really similar story. <laughs> I think it's complete bullshit. I think Demondred had the seal. And gave it to Taim, yeah. It made me wonder for a minute about a connection between Fane and and Taim, but there's there's just nothing there that I could uh, find that I could think of. Anyway, I think the connection is in the made up story. It's like this. This is. It's like oh, it's the same story. This is this is the story that people make up when they're like, oh, where did you find this? Uh, it was passed down <laughs> from family to family. Um, from the great Arthur Hawkwing, and right? um, it's like you're trying yeah. to remember the lie your friend made up last week. Like you almost got it right, but not quite. You know. <laughs> and then he thought I was so great that they gave it to me. Cause right. Because yeah. <laughs> clearly, I mean, because clearly, after, after two thousand years, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm the right guy. Yeah, no, it's I as opposed to a more realistic story, which is. Do be Captain Bale Domans, who's like, oh yeah, I bought it at a market because someone was selling it, right? Like that to me is much more realistic. <laughs> yeah. If Rand actually finds it, finds it in a mystical place, that's that's a little different, you know, the bottom of the eye of the world. Or I believed uh, Captain Domans' story. He had one of the seals, right? He yep. had one of the seals, right? Yeah, and he was just like, I enjoy collecting all things, and I travel from place to place, and I look for rare items, and you know, I don't even know what half the stuff is, but I can tell it's real old and. I enjoy it. And that's why he's being chased that's all the time. It's yeah. The seal. <laughs> that's why when Matt and Rand jump on and he's like, and they're like, ah, oh, Trollocs, he's, he's like, oh, they're after me. Well, they're after him because they know that he's got a seal on, on board. And They've he's been, been after him. Been chased. They've yeah. been after him for a while. So, yeah, that's a fun little little twist um, that help, that helps Rand and Matt get on board without, like, him being like, no, you can't come on board. You're th- surrounded by Trollocs. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, even that's a more believable story that I, you know, I bought it and I probably got ripped off, but it looks like a legit artifact. Mm-hmm. I believe that more than someone just gave it to you. Shock painted the man's face. And that's when he's looking at Taim. That's Taim's reaction to him breaking the seal. Uh, and I was just curious, like, I, that does make oh, it less too. likely that Taim sort of planned to give it to him to make him go insane, right? I, I mean, it's... It, I think it supports the theory it's got a tracker on it because it makes Taim would much would be like shocked if his tracker. Oh, that's you. Thing. I, I was going to say, it it certainly shows that Taim does not want him to break it. Whether that's because Taim knows that there's a tracker there, or because Taim doesn't know anything at all. Yeah, or he wants the Dark One's influence to slowly seep into Rand. Or like Demondred said, here's what's going to happen, and to my 
Taim was like, yeah, sure. Give hands the dragon reborn the seal, and he's picking it up, and he's like, oh my god, <laughs> no way, he's not really gonna do it, is he? That could be it too. I don't know. Do you know what this is? You must, or you wouldn't have brought it to me. Where did you find it? Do you have another? Do you know where where another is? And here's a major problem with loading four questions into a sentence. No, Taim said, voice unsteady. <laughs> that is the only one I. <laughs> I've ever heard all sorts of rumors since I escaped the Aes Sedai, and he just dissembles and doesn't actually answer any of Rand's questions. I mean, he does say, say no, but it could be to anything, or a flat denial that he'll answer the question. Like, that <laughs> doesn't mean anything in that context. So I think what he's doing is actually answering the questions in reverse order. So do you know where another is? No. Do you have another? That's the only one that I... And then where did you find it? And then he goes into his story. So he actually answers all those questions. Except the first one that Rand answers himself. Do you know what this is? You must or you wouldn't have brought it to me. That's sort of rhetorical. And then, do you know what Do you know what this is? Yes. Where did you find it? He talks about the farm. Do you have another? That's the only one I... F- yeah, he says, that's the only one I ever... Or, that's the only one I... Dot, dot, dot. And then he says, like, I've heard rumors, dot, dot, dot. It's kind of a broken... Yeah. He interrupts himself. So you're not really sure what he was going to say. And that, that interrupting himself could be like... Maybe he saw two of them, but that's the only one he has, you know, and he sort of, he didn't want to say, oh, that's the only one I've got, because then Rand would be like, oh, but did you see another one? I love Bashir also. It's the only other person that speaks in the scene, and all Bashir says is, I don't know what that is, but I think maybe you should wait before deciding to break it, huh? (laughs) It's it's the only other line of dialogue in the whole. (laughs) Unwrap it first, you know? (laughs) Uh, sorry, I don't know why I find that so amusing. It's very, it's like being the cool guy in the corner when it's like, he's dealing with literally two of the most dangerous people in the world. And he's just like, you know, maybe, maybe don't in the world. Hey, no big deal, but uh, could be grandma's china or something. Like you might, you might want to unwrap it before you just smash the thing. Okay. <laughs> this is a moment between Bashir and Rand, just for context. For a moment... Rand studied him. Everyone's waiting for me to go mad. Afraid of it. But not you. You must have thought I finally was just now, but you weren't afraid of me even then. Bashir shrugged, grinning behind his gray-streaked mustaches. When I first slept in a saddle, Mwad Chied, 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 struggling. Mwad Chied, Chied? Sure. Trying to make up my mind. Chied? I'll go with Chied. Yeah, yeah, sure. (laughs) Sorry. Trip me up. Shade. Shade? Oh, I like that. When I first slept in his saddle, Mwad Shade was Marshal General. The man was as mad as a hare in spring thaw. Twice every day he searched his body servant for poison, and he drank nothing but vinegar and water, which he claimed was sovereign against the poison the fellow fed him. But he ate everything the man prepared for him as long as I knew him. Once he had a grove of oaks chopped down because they were looking at him and then insisted they be given decent funerals. He gave the oration. Do you have any idea how long it takes to dig graves for 23 oak trees? Why didn't someone do something? His family? Those not as mad as he was, or madder, were afraid to look at him sideways. Tenobia's father wouldn't have let anyone touch shade anyway. He might have been insane, but he could outgeneral anyone I ever saw. He never lost a battle. He never even came close to losing. Rand laughed. So you follow me because you think I can outgeneral the Dark One? I follow you because you are who you are, Bashir said quietly. The world must follow you, or those who survive will wish themselves dead. Slowly, Rand nodded. The prophecy said he would break nations and bind them together. Not that he wanted to, but the prophecies were his only guide to how to fight the last battle, how to win it. Even without them, he thought the binding together was necessary. The last battle would not just be him against the Dark One. He could not believe that. If he was going mad, he was not yet mad enough to believe he was more than a man. It would be mankind against Trollocs and Murdral, too, and every sort of shadow spawn the Blight could vomit out, and Dark Friends rising out of their hiding places. There would be other dangers on that road to Tarman guide on. And if the world was not united, you do what must be done. He was not sure whether that was himself or Luce Theron but it was the truth as far as he could see. 
Walking quickly to the nearest colonnade, he spoke over his shoulder to Bashir. I am taking Taim to the farm. Do you want to come along? The farm? Taim said. Bashir shook his head. Thank you. No, he said dryly. He might not allow any nerves to show, but Rand and Taim together were probably as much as he could take. He certainly avoided the farm. My men are growing soft policing the streets for you. I mean to put some of them back into their saddles properly for a few hours. You were going to expect them, inspect them the, uh, this afternoon. Has that changed? What farm? Taim said. Rand sighed, suddenly weary. No, that hasn't changed. I'll be there if I can. It was too important to change, though. None but Bashir and Matt knew. He could not let anyone else think it more than a casual matter, a useless ceremony for a man growing taken with the pomp of his position, the dragon reborn going out to be cheered by his soldiers. He had another visit to make today, too, one that everyone would think he was trying to keep secret. It might even stay secret, for most, but he had no doubt that those he wanted to learn of it would. Taking up his sword from where it stood against one of the narrow columns, he buckled it on over his undone coat. The belt was unadorned dark boarhide, just like the scabbard and long hilt. The buckle was ornate, a finely worked dragon of etched, ste etched steel inlaid with gold. He should get rid of that buckle, find something plain. He could not bring himself to do it, though. It had been a gift from Avienda, which was the reason he should rid himself of it. He could never think his way out of that circle. Something else waited there for him, too. A two-foot-long length of spear with a green and white tassel below the sharp head. He hefted it as he turned back to the courtyard. One of the maidens had carved the short shaft with dragons. Some people were already calling it the dragon scepter, especially El Elenia and that lot. Rand kept, Ran kept the thing close to remind himself that he might have more enemies than those he could see. What farm are you talking about? Taim's voice grew harder. Where is it you mean to take me? For a long moment, Rand studied the man. He did not like Taim. Something in the fellow's manner would not allow it, or maybe something in himself. For so long he had been the only man who could even think of channeling without looking over his shoulder in a sweat for I said I. Well, it seemed a long time, and at least the I said I would not try to gentle him, not now that they knew who he was. Could it be as simple as that? Jealousy that he was no longer unique? He did not think so. Apart from everything else, he would welcome more men who could channel walking the earth unmolested. Finally, he would stop being a freak. No. No, it would not go that far. Not this side of Tarman Gaidon. He was unique. He was the Dragon Reborn, whatever his reasons. He just did not like the man. Kill him! Lucerne shrieked. Kill them all! Rand pushed the voice back down. He did not have to like Taim, only to use him and trust him. That was the hard part. I am taking you where you can serve me, he said coldly. Taim did not flinch or frown. He merely watched and waited, the corners of his mouth twitching for one moment in that almost smile. I wanted to bring up the the fact that he's thinking about Avienda, who is now gone, which is part of the reason why he can't part with any gifts from her. She, he sent her off, and he regrets it. And then this is the birth of the dragon scepter, right? So he's had the spear, which was the Shan Chan spear, but this it's now has the dragons carved into it. And it's a little bit of an offhanded comment where it's like, oh yeah, by the way, someone carved the dragon dragons into my Sean Chan spear and they're calling it the dragon scepter, which he carries for a while. I like it. Um, it's one of those things I actually highlighted inside of the giant highlight. That's the end because I just really like that line. Rand kept the thing close to remind himself that he might have more enemies than those he could see. <laughs> like the one right in front of him. It's a clever idea, and I just kind of relate to it. You know, I've had kept objects like that before that are you keep because they're bad lessons or, you know. Mm. Re things to remember, like, hey, don't fuck this up again. Right. Do better next time. It's, yeah, it's a dangerous world or, you know. It's a different world than where you come from. Points if you didn't remember that song. And I, I also like that. He doesn't just carry the dragon scepter to remind himself to kick the Sean Chan's ass or something so simple as that. He rem he's reminding himself not to forget that there are people who are aiming at him that he doesn't even know exists yet. Make sure you're paying attention to what you can't see. No. <laughs> I mean, just be aware that there are things happening which you can't see. Uh, yeah, like that, Devico. No knowns and known unknowns. 
not sure if I like that quote or hate that quote. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> but I, I, I do think there's a, a lot to be said for the quality in people where uh, that, you know, people who have the ability to say, he, here's a thing I am, I am fully aware that I have, don't know anything about. Right. It's an important quality. Everybody, everybody should have a bit of it. But I think it's been used as like an excuse <laughs> for a lot of people. No unknowns. <laughs> yeah, I'm like oh well, if that was an unknown unknown, so I couldn't have done anything about it. It's like that's. Uh... Oh sure, I mean you know. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was a known unknown, you buddy, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, think you're lying. That's really where I'm coming with that from. That's, that's a good chapter. Yeah, it's fun. Well, in the introduction of Taim is a good one. I think it's fun to really uh, meet him and, and see, like, the evil is getting close to Rand, right? It's sneaking in. He's lost his friends. Mm-hmm. And I just, I like seeing, you know, this sort of new group. I don't, and, and like I said, uh, the Lord of Chaos, where the characters are in the Lord of Chaos, to me, is sort of... When you th- think of Rand, this is the Rand I think of. One that definitely has Lewis Theron in his head. He's a little insane. But, you know, he's still our Rand. He's not Darth Rand yet. He's not, like, the hardened Quendiar evil, like, asshole that he ends up sort of becoming. Yeah, King Rand. And so, yeah. So, th- I, I, this is who I th- And, like, all the characters in this era, though. Know, Perrin has become King Perrin. Matt has the Band of the Red Hand. But, yeah, this is sort of my... And I think that that has a lot to do with when I read the books, like because uh, when I first sat down and I read the first six books, and that's what was out. So to me, sort of, I got that whole evolution of farm boy to this point in one go, and then I had to mm-hmm. wait like years between every other one. And so I did a lot of rereading of those first six books. And so to me, these first six books really are more the wheel of time than any of the other books, if that makes any sense, just because they were. I read them so many times more than any of the other ones. Yeah, I hear you. And I mean, you know, it's not as if as much doesn't happen in the other books, but they happen over shorter and shorter periods of time. So they tell shorter stories, even though the stories are often longer. <laughs> they tell stories that take which take place over shorter periods of time. Although these, because the story is so much more complex, you know, there may be hundreds of characters as opposed to, you know, and uh, hundreds of characters in uh, Crossroads or something as opposed to Eye of the World where there's like dozens. The uh, the scope just changes. Yeah, totally. No, and I would say that these first almost, yeah, these, these first six books, maybe seven, sort of roll up with uh, a story that starts, you get sort of a plot line and usually ends with a big battle or a bang. And a lot of people's plot lines sort of begin and end. Like, Do My As Wells is kind of beginning with Taim and the meeting with the Aes Sedai. Like, we saw that begin, and it's going to end this book. And it has consequences, but it's a one-book plot line. Uh, and I feel like after book six, he just doesn't do one-book plot lines anymore. <laughs> At that point, it's just like... <laughs> One story. He's just trying to finish the story, and that's that's why that's where the slog in quotes begins, because you're no longer telling a story per book that has sort of three arcs, and you sort of get that satisfying beginning, middle, end with a with a satisfying ending. What you're getting is one story told over right eight, six, seven. Oh, eight I more totally books. agree with that. Yeah. One three thousand page book, right? As opposed to yeah, people are looking for their little thrill every couple hundred of. 100 pages and when that doesn't happen <laughs> every thousand pages or so you know just like to get a little <laughs> little little wrapping up of stuff i can see that yeah gordon was saying there's a lot of cliffhangery um endings to the books so which i totally agree with uh in these later ones between matt getting a wall falling on him and like fayil getting abducted yeah yeah i totally agree with that and that's and that's where especially when you had to wait years 
between books. And when the years started increasing between books, it became very frustrating in real time to like, oh, not only do I not get the satisfaction in this book, but then I have to wait like two extra years to get it in the next book. Very frustrating. Bummer. <laughs> and then, and then, of course, that's why Crosswoods of Twilight was so frustrating because you waited extra years to get the satisfaction, and then it went back in time, and you were just like, "No, why, Jordan? Why?" And the why is a whole bunch of stories that were in Crossroads should have been in Winter's Heart. Yeah. In my, am I age? I think those those two books, if they had been um, combined into one. I've always said like I would I would re I would take all the chapters from those two books and I'd like to sit down and reorder them in chronological order and then go through them like that. That would be fun, I think. It would be all over the goddamn place though. We'd have to have like a a list of of chapters and keep thing, them carefully crossed off, but I think it would be fun to 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 look at that and like do a bunch of the chapters from Crossroads of Twilight before we get to the cleansing in Winter's Heart cuz like we see it start and then we could like go into Crossroads of Twilight and like what are all the other characters seeing while Rand is cleansing? And then after we do all that, then we can go back, do the cleansing, the final bit of the cleansing, and then get back into Crossroads of Twilight having skipped a bunch of that stuff. Because it it's actually not that much of the book when you look at it. It feels like a lot, but it's only the first like 200 pages, 300 pages, which is still a lot, I guess. But Wait, what, uh, the, the cleansing? Yeah. Yeah, that, that sequence, because you're watching it from both perspectives, from what I can remember as well, from the inside and the outside. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I think we can, I, it would be just fun to reorder those chapters in chronological order and, and read them in that order and see if it, it helps any with the, uh, the frustration that I feel when I'm reading those. Thank you for listening to the Wheel of Time Spoilers podcast. Rate us in the Apple Podcast app or support us on Patreon. Is that good enough?